Okay, so here is your Epic Hell Advent video. This is a pretty fast team. It's not auto. I can do an auto team later, but in my opinion, you shouldn't do an auto team because it's just really slow. There's a lot to cover here, so the stats will be detailed more in the descriptions with links so that you can look at the units um, at your leisure. Uh, I went with Landy on this one because I wanted a little bit more damage for a little bit more healing, and I went with Holiday Euphine because she's slower, and you need to slow stage one down to get rid of the attack buff. On stage two, I went with Rowana because, again, it does a lot more damage, and you need to slow it down so that you can get rid of the mana protection buff, and that's hard to do with just Helga and no healing beyond Flurry's passive. And part three, we're just going to cheese it with a one-shot using Watcher Shuri and Asaria to reset Watcher Shuri so that we can push him twice and ideally nuke the boss in two hits before she even really takes a turn. Oh, I forgot to mention it, but squeeze 200% effect resistance on Asaria. So here's how this fight goes down. The first and most important thing is you need to set the team up to get rid of that battle mana buff. It looks like the permanent attack buff underneath the health bar. I'll save you a little bit of reading, but basically this buff means she'll kill your team a lot easier unless you get rid of it, and the way you get rid of it is to kill all of the mini bosses so that only she remains, and then hit her with five AoE attack skills. That's the reason for Holiday Euphine. Holiday Euphine, even though she's fire, everything she does is an AoE attack. So she will be good at spamming the AoE attacks without doing enough damage to actually kill Alicia. And that will ensure we get our five AoE hits in after all of the little rock crystals are gone. And make sure we get rid of that mana buff. It's so efficient, in fact, that you can run this, this phase completely on full auto. So there's the first AoE hit. Second AoE hit. Third AoE hit. Fourth AoE hit. Destruction. Answer my call. And with this fifth AoE hit, that will dispel that buff. And it's slow enough that we don't have to worry about our team killing Alicia before we progress to the next stage. Now on to stage two. In stage two we need to get rid of mana protection because again, the boss will just kick your butt unless you get rid of it. And the way you do it is by hitting with single attacks the little Yeti in the front five times. So whenever Sid gets a turn, I go ahead and attack Alicia to try to burst her down a little bit. Anybody else single target attacks the uh, the little ice troll or frost troll in the front. So that's one hit into the troll. Sid will continue to hit Alicia to burst her damage down a little bit. There's two hits on the troll. Now you do want to be careful, you don't want to push Alicia below 33% or you'll push phase. You need to make sure you get rid of that buff first. There's three hits on the troll. And you can see the purpose of Rowana here. She is keeping everybody healed from all these dual attacks. And she can also throw up this raise buff, which can be a lifesaver if by chance somebody decides to hard focus your Sid. The injury does stack up and Sid can get one shot. There's the fourth hit to the troll. There's the fifth hit to the troll, one more hit to the troll, and the shield buff is gone. So now we can go ahead and push face safely, now that that mana protection buff is gone. Now phase three is pretty easy to do. You just need to make sure your acid is fast enough to go before Alicia and has Spirit's Breath now Artifact. He pushes up Watcher Shuri. Watcher Shuri Let's does his S3. This will let Alicia take a turn. Um, because I have effect resistance on my Asaria, she doesn't take a debuff. You can just have your Asaria go faster than 
Alicia and then she can do her S2 and you don't have to worry about effect resistance. She will apply a debuff. It doesn't have to be attack break. It could be any of those three debuffs. So I use Song of Stars to increase the chance for debuffing. Watcher gets his turn. Because he was reset, he can S3 again and that finishes the phase. And that's all there is to it. A pretty fast run, all things considered. So one more time I'll breeze over the stats on this team. More details can be found in the description of the video. Holiday Euphine is just there to AoE spam people. The artifact doesn't really matter. Um, you don't want her to do a ton of damage. She's just there to remove the mana buff. Landy could be replaced with Bologna. She would work just fine. She's just there to keep everybody healthy because we're slowing stage one down. Vivian is just there for more AoE spams and to keep immunity on everybody so you don't get debuffed. Flurry is our defense breaker um, and also passive healer. Sid is our damage dealer. You can use any other artifact, but the uh, Dust Devil does help with damage. And a Stella Harpa Rowana to help keep us healthy and debuff free. You could use Vile too. Spirit's Breath on Alots for the double pushing. Watcher Shuri for our nuke. And Asaria to reset Watcher Shuri. If you, if you don't have Spirit's Breath, you could probably use Strays. Just make sure his attack is high enough that he does a sufficient nuke that Watcher can finish the job. So there's my epic hell team. I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section. And if you enjoy the content, consider giving a like and maybe a subscribe. Have a great one.